Over the past 60 years, millions of people around the world have called themselves fans of the Grateful Dead, and these celebrities are not among them. A vehicle for the songs of lead singer and chief songwriter Kurt Cobain, Nirvana was at the forefront of the Pacific Northwest grunge movement, a genre that definitely combined catchy pop elements, sludgy guitar riffs, and the spirit to punk rock. Cobain embraced many aspects of the punk identity, including an animosity toward older, seemingly failed cultural revolutions. In one journal entry, he wrote, I like to blame my parents' generation for coming so close to social change than giving up, and it seems that the Grateful Dead bore the brunt of much of his ire. During a Nirvana photo shoot in the early 1990s, for example, Cobain wore a t-shirt that read, Punk's Not Dead, and Kill the Grateful Dead. Cobain so resented the Grateful Dead, in fact, that he openly objected to the band's iconography being connected with his own band. In 1992, he told Melody Maker, I hate tie-dyed t-shirts, too. You know their bootleg tie-dyed t-shirts of Nirvana? I hate that. I wouldn't wear a tie-dyed t-shirt unless it was dyed with the urine of Phil Collins and the blood of Jerry Garcia. <laughs> Keith Richards and Jerry Garcia rank among the most acclaimed rock guitarists of all time, and they're also two of the most successful and influential musicians of any kind to have emerged in the 1960s. Both have a signature sound and demonstrated prowess with the guitar, Richards as a purveyor of electric blues-influenced rock, and Garcia of a freewheeling, semi-improvised, complex style. One big difference between them, however, is the guitarist's opinions about each other. The Grateful Dead guitarist harbored a major love for the Stones' 1967 album Between the Buttons, and he covered some of its songs during several live shows. But Richards didn't return the sentiment, often voicing his distaste for the band, their long concerts, and the frontman's guitar skills. In 2015, he told Billboard, The Grateful Dead is where everybody got it wrong. Just poodling about for hours and hours. Jerry Garcia, boring man. Sorry, Jerry. In the late 1960s, San Francisco was the unofficial headquarters of the hippie counterculture movement, and so it naturally produced countless musicians over the course of the decade. I am a golden god! Yeah! Many went on to become superstars with long careers, including both the Grateful Dead and Steve Miller, frontman of an eponymous band that would record many classic rock radio staples in the years to come. Just because they came up together in the same place at the same time, however, didn't mean Miller enjoyed Garcia's music. During a panel talk at the 2008 I Create Music Exposition, Miller said, I couldn't stand that band. He also insisted that 60s San Francisco was a social phenomenon rather than an incubator for great musicians, and claimed that his band was more technically proficient than all the others that were active at the time. In the 1970s, the Ramones helped define punk rock with their stripped-down, confrontational style four-piece unit who all dressed the same and adopted the stage surname Ramon. The band played with unabashed amateurism, speed, and volume as they chugged their way through songs about dissatisfaction and antisocial attitudes. Punk is just a rebellious rock for all kids uh, all over. Compare that to, say, the music of the Grateful Dead, with their long, meandering, epic songs about love and psychedelics played on a stage filled with hippie virtuosos. When reporter Jim Sullivan asked the Ramones about other major rock bands in 1979, Guitarist Johnny Ramone and bassist Dee Dee Ramone offered their pointed, withering criticism of the Grateful Dead. Dee Dee said, I guess we feel sorry for them. And Johnny added, I think they did too much LSD. Dee Dee went on to explain that he just couldn't be a fan of the group. He said, I never had any interest. I saw some pictures of them when I was a kid and they looked so awful. I like nice, clean looking rock stars. Anthony Bourdain made his musical preferences known on more than one occasion. The celebrity chef absorbed much of the ethos of the 1970s punk rock movement that he experienced firsthand, and so he held a special affinity with bands such as The Modern Lovers, The Stooges, Patti Smith, Talking Heads, and Bad Brains. And he hated The Grateful Dead just as passionately. During a Q&A session in 2010, Bourdain said, You know what? I may be a lefty, but I hate hippies. As a former employer, I learned very early to never hire a dead fan because arrival time was always a problem with those guys. I hate four-hour guitar solos. 